Sometimes, all you need is one person to have the courage to speak out. At one point, he said, I'm Bill Cosby. He, out of nowhere, grabbed my legs and tried to pull them apart. And the first thing I did was I pushed Mr. Cosby away and he kind of lost balance. One person to lift the lid on a secret that's been buried for decades. I have to admit, seeing Harvey Weinstein in handcuffs is something I wasn't sure I would ever see. And it feels, honestly, really good. Dr. Ford, with what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100%. And this month in South Africa, one man did just that. I was one of the boys he wanted, but not an aberration or an anomaly when he raped me in the mouth when I was 17. That's the voice of Dion Wiggett, who, through bravely talking about his own alleged sexual assault, managed to expose two decades of abuse that affected 20 young men in three schools. And it's all at the hands of one man, a man who we now know to be Willem Breitenbach. Breitenbach's abuse didn't end at those three schools. In fact, it continued, according to our sources and according to Dion, for years at one media company, the biggest media company in the country, our media company, Media24. You're listening to The Story. It's a new podcast from News24. Every week, we're going to take you inside our newsroom. We'll speak to journalists and experts about the week's biggest story. This is what we saw, heard, and uncovered this week. Hi, Jerusha. Hi, Adrian. Thanks for joining us today. Sure. So, look, this is not an easy story that we've published today. And there are so many things at play right now. Um, as I'm speaking to Adrian, it is Thursday afternoon. We've just gone live this morning across News24 with this huge story. Adrian, how are you feeling? How's it sitting with you? I think there's something to celebrate when one exposes a, um, a criminal like this. And, and obviously for me, um, as you know, there's, there's also a personal element to the story because I know Willem Breitenbach. He was, he was a mentor and someone I looked up to as a child. Um, and, and turns out he was a terrible sexual predator who preyed on young boys. And, and I, I was, I don't know if it's lucky or privileged to make an escape. Adrian, we've been through this editorial process from the very beginning, and there wasn't a second's hesitation about the fact that we were going to publish this, um, even though it involves the company that we work for. Talk us through that decision. Um, I say decision, but really, we we didn't debate it much at all. It was a cut and dry case that it was going to get published. Tell us about that. At no stage was there, in my mind, any doubt that the fact that uh, Breitenbach used to work at Media 24, that that would stop us from doing the story. Um, I mean, editorial independence is at the heart of what we do. And, and you know, I have great respect for our CEO, Ishmet Davidson, and, and, and the, the way the company has handled this in, in not interfering at all. And in fact, in supporting us in doing this investigation, um, I think the biggest hurdle, Jerusha, for for me was the legal one, the the defamation hurdle. Obviously, calling someone a a pedophile or a, a child abuser is 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 highly defamatory, and you have to get over certain hurdles. And and that was my discussion with Dion Wiggett from the beginning. Um, and and it wasn't always easy discussions. I had to say to him, "Look, Dion, as much as I believe you." Um, that may not be enough. We, we, we will definitely need an affidavit by you, uh, signed under oath, uh, which means if you lie in that affidavit, you could go to prison. And then preferably we need more victims. We need more survivors of Breitenbach to, to, to make the story um, just undeniable. Um, I spent a lot of time reading up about what the uh, journalists in, in the United States, journalists like Jody Cantor from the New York Times, how they approach the Harvey Weinstein story. Because I do believe, in a way, this is a Me Too moment for Media24 and for the media industry. 
um, and 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 yeah, Dion was was uh, amazing. He, he completely got it. He um, he worked with our lawyers in in getting his version uh, and other people's versions under oath and and on affidavit, and and that put us in a place to ultimately name him. Absolutely, ultimately, very similarly to the Weinstein story, it comes down to power and influence. Willem Breitenbach had power and he wielded it over young men um, who were in a very vulnerable situation. Talk to us about that dynamic. Yes, I mean, Jerisha, this is, this is just such a sad story. So he was first a teacher um, and I mean, we've it's unfortunately not the first case in South Africa or in the world where we've seen teachers um, abusing children. And, um, you know, this is often what pedophiles and, 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 and people who prey on children do, is they find um, places where, where they uh, can get in contact and free access to children. So what better than to be a teacher at a boarding school where you live in the, in the hostel? Um, and this is what Breitenbach did at three schools, you know, and... Our information is, and in fact Dion has uh, some of this um, um, on statement, is that it happened at all the schools that he taught um, where he um, allegedly abused boys. And, uh, you know, this also again begs the question, why, where were the systems, where is the safety net in society that says this person shouldn't be allowed near kids? In fact, this person belongs in prison. Um, and it's 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 a real shame that in the in the late 80s, 90s, throughout the 90s, and even 2000s, it seems that these safety nets were either non-existent or ignored or broken. Um, and 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 then yes, at Media 24 again, um, getting access to schoolboys through the school newspaper project, where I was also a member of. Um, and then just obviously through through his employment of, of young men at Media24 and also later at his own company. Um, a very powerful, very bullish guy, very uh, loud and confident and larger than life. He's physically very big, but also in terms of his stature, you know, and, and the way he walks and talks and speaks, you know, he's, he kind of owns the space. And... Um, and and yes, uh, such a such a shame that he got away with what he did for so many years before someone in the in the name of Dion Wigert had the guts to stand up and say no more. And it's just extraordinarily brave what Dion's done. As our listeners are listening to this podcast, this week's episode of The Story, Dion will be working on episode four. Um, it's the culmination of all his hard work and everything's going to wrap. So in terms of what our listeners can look forward to in the coming week, um, talk us through where we are and what we expect. Yeah, so this investigation is really kind of went into another gear today um, with the publication of Breitenbach's identity. The police uh, is also now on the case, so uh, you know, who knows what will be in episode 4? Who knows where the police investigation would be? We, who knows if we would have found Willem Breitenbach by then? Um, you'll remember Dion's uh, uh, recurring theme in, in my only story is we need to catch him before the summer starts because Jimmy loves the beach and um, and that was, was Dion's greatest concern, that, that Breitenbach shouldn't be allowed to prey on children this summer. Um, so will he be caught by uh, episode four? Let's let's uh, let's let's hope so, and let's see how it goes. Of course, we'll be keeping um, our listeners and our readers up to date as things progress. That's News 24's editor in chief, Adrian Basson. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank you, Jerusha. Right now, you can imagine that. This entire story is, um, well, it's it's primed for litigation. There are lots of legal issues going on here, particularly naming Willem Breitenbach. So we've had our lawyer, Willem de Klerk of Willem de Klerk Attorneys here in Johannesburg, walk this road with us step by step. And um, he's going to join us now on the line and explain exactly how we made these decisions and um, some of the legalities behind naming Willem, publishing the podcast and why this is in the public interest to do so. Hi, Willem. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Now, you have been walking this road with us 
from the very beginning, and this week, of course, the revelations are explosive, we have named somebody who we believe to be a sexual predator, and we didn't do it lightly. So talk us through the process of how we came to name him. How is it allowed, basically? I prefer not to discuss the merits of this particular matter publicly in too much detail, for obvious reasons. But uh, what I am prepared to say is that um, this was a <clears throat> this was not something that we decided on lightly. We um, we were very close to the story from the from the very start. We had interviews, we had discussions, we had sight of statements and affidavits, um, and there was a debate with the News 24's editorial team uh, before the decisions were made to 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 cover the podcast and also to identify the alleged perpetrator. Right. In fact, you were very adamant with us that you would require um, affidavits. You would require people who are willing to to recount their stories on the record. And and that is the case at the moment. That's correct. You know, the difficulty when it comes to these kinds of matters, sexual abuse and rape, that more often than not, they happen behind closed doors. So the difficulty that the media often has is that it's one person's version against another person's version. And um, as you would know, um, the media is not entitled <clears throat> to publish allegations merely because they have been made. You've got to go through a process of assessing the, the veracity of the allegations. You've got to seek um, verification where possible. So, you know, we we went through various steps and, and the kind of steps that one would take in cases like this is, I mean, at the very least, uh, the media must have a personal interview with the person who's making these claims. We must know who he is. And the more detailed the version is, the more credible it is. Um, a big factor is if the, if the alleged victim is prepared to speak under his or her own name, that that also tends to give credibility to the allegations that is being made. Absolutely. And in this case, we know that Dion very bravely um, spoke um, under his own name. He's, he's, been, he's been very upfront about it all, which we, of course, really appreciate. Willem, when a case like this lands on your desk, just from your legal perspective, what are what are some of the things that that come to mind? What are some of the the, the ways that you prepare yourself to handle um, something of this nature? I've been in this game a while, and you've got to approach whatever's being said with sufficient skepticism. Um, whether his story hangs together, um, whether there's verification, and and one of the big things in in cases like this, allegations of sexual abuse, is if other people come forward independently with similar allegations against the same individual. That um, that gives a, a substantial boost to the credibility of the allegations. And of course, when they involve children, claims of the sexual abuse of those under the age of 18, um, the public interest in the matter is um, is just very big. Absolutely. Of course, as journalists, we truly believe this to be in the public interest. Um, from your legal perspective, then, um, this involves minors, it involves multiple people. Um, so you would agree that it is in the public interest too? There's no question about it. Look, you know, every now and then there is the legal debate about whether something is in the public interest or whether it is merely um, interesting to the public. Mm. But when you deal with rape and sexual abuse, there's simply no question. Of course, it is of public interest, provided the allegations are true or reasonably believed to be true. Well, Willem, we're really grateful that you've walked this path with us. And of course, you're sticking with us, um, particularly as we look to publish episode four next week. Thanks, Willem. Thank you, Jerusha. Bye-bye. The Story is a weekly podcast by News24. It's hosted by me, Jerusha Sukthio Rath, and produced and edited by Nokotula Manyati. For more on this story, visit news24.com.